Yeah, I speak for everybody in our program. We have a lot of respect for Northern Kentucky. I had a chance to watch almost every game they've played to this point. They've had a fabulous season, uh, share their conference title, conference tournament title, bid to this tournament. It's not just a one uh, season story either. They've had a lot of success since coach has been there. He's done a great job. Uh, it's their second NCAA tournament, an NIT bid last year. So first of all, we just respect their program. Uh, they're very, very well coached. They have an identity. They're uh, explosive and balanced offensively and defensively. They're be one of the toughest defenses we've uh, had to play against this year. Uh, and then they have very good talent. Obviously, the conference MVPs on this team, as well as several other guys, I think, that are all conference players. Um, they've got experience. They've got uh, young talent. So this is the NCAA tournament. Uh, me, personally, I've never really believed in all the seeding and stuff. You get in the tournament, everybody's good. Anybody can beat anybody. Been fortunate in my career to kind of be on both sides of these. You know, we felt like our Little Rock team a couple years ago was good enough to beat anybody. And I'm sure Northern Kentucky feels the same way. So um, nothing but respect from us to their program. We know we'll have to play really well to advance to the second round. We're looking forward to the opportunity to play on Friday. Uh, we know they're, they're going to play hard for sure. Uh, this is a tournament and everybody's going to give you their best shot. And uh, we know that we got to stay locked in and play how, how we know, like who we are and remember that all the way through. Tariq, we had a chance to talk to Matt about you know his first tournament uh, experience. Why not? But for you coming to Tech, and this was like obviously a goal of yours to get to the NCAA tournament. How does it feel with whole selection Sunday? And now that you've had a couple of days to reflect on it, um, it feels really good. Um, you know, this is what we came here for with this coaching staff and this team. You know, um, we really spent a lot of time together. And we really bonded, and it just feels great. Um, I'm happy to do it with these guys and this coaching staff. Uh, just really excited, ready to, you know, just keep grinding and see where it goes. And both for you and this team, how are you using the time off from the Big 12 tournament all the way until you play on Friday just to recoup yourself and this team overall? Um, we're just trying to get uh, mentally and physically prepared. Uh, we know it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a grind. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to prepare as best as possible, uh, sticking to the process, still doing, sticking to our regular routines. Nothing's going to change. Um, just keep doing the things that got us to this point up into the season. Davide, how much did last year's run help prepare you uh, coming into this year with regards to knowing how the tournament's going to work, knowing how you guys are going to have to prepare for it and all that aspect? Yeah, um, me, JC, and Lawrence, Brandon, uh, we know what, what we're getting into. It. Uh, we just let to like know uh, Tariq and Matt uh, how it's going to be. Uh, there's more like they know there's going to be a battle. We just had to like let them know that uh, we got to play our best basketball to win the game, the first one, the most important one. Was the feeling the same uh, for the d two different watch parties last year versus this year, uh, knowing that you guys got the location that you were hoping for for the fans? Uh, yeah, it was kind of the same as last year. And then we we're, were happy to be there, and uh, we were just, you know, enjoy our time. David, you've mentioned a couple times about uh, improving on the defensive end. Personally, uh, what problems does this group from Northern Kentucky pose for you guys on the perimeter? Seem like they shoot maybe better than a lot of the like the uh, Kansas and Oklahoma State has yeah. against you guys this year. Yeah, they they shoot really good. Uh, I don't think they have any players shoot below the 35 percent from three. And uh, you know the most upset happen when a really good team can hit threes. So we gotta be careful for that. We gotta guard the three-point line first of all. But we know that they play really hard. They play in transition. Uh, they run a lot, so they play really tough. And uh, we gotta we gotta grind it. We gotta we gotta stay focused and uh, be who we are. Tariq, for you defensively, uh, how important is it to? Uh, I mean, clearly it's important, but to stay out of foul trouble against uh, against this group. Um, it's very important. Um, you know, especially in a tournament, everybody everybody's going to play hard and every game is going to be tough. Most games are very close, so um, we're going to need everybody on our team to do their role and, and do it to the best of their ability so I can't get in foul trouble. Um, I know that, uh, you know, playing defense and protecting the rim is a big thing for our team. So, um, you know, I just got to do my best, you know, stay in the film room, watch film, and stay out of foul trouble. 
you guys have had a couple of days now. Is is there is there a Big 12 team or somebody you guys played in in the non-conference that you can compare this team to? Um, I mean they're a really good team. I mean I wouldn't compare really try to compare them to anybody. They're just a really good team. Uh, they have really good, talented players. They get up and down. So, uh, you know, they made it to this point for a reason. So it's going to be very, very tough. They're going to be a tough team to play. So, Tariq, what does March Madness mean to you? And when did you kind of start watching college basketball? No, uh, I've been, I've been watching college basketball since I can remember. Uh, the tournament's always been a big thing. You know, growing up. Uh, since I started playing basketball, it's always been a goal to, you know, make it to college and play in it. So, you know, it's just a big goal that I set for myself. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy that I got a chance to achieve it with this coaching staff and these guys here. Some of the players you kind of watched and just kind of obviously kind of grew fond of throughout the year just to kind of watch and kind of enjoy it. Um, I know my favorite year watching was uh, with Doug McDermott. I know that was my favorite year watching, uh, you know, their team and just watching how they played and stuff, uh, you know. Watching Kevin Durant when he was in college, and there was a lot of other players, but yeah, definitely my favorite was watching Doug McDermott. With Northern Kentucky, they have a really good uh, kind of big over there, Drew McDonald. What what are the challenges he kind of poses to you all? Uh, he's a very skilled player. Um, from watching film, he's very talented. He can shoot it, score in the post, uh, good court vision, plays very well with his teammates. So, um, you know, he's just a good player, and we're just going to have to try to key in on him and not let him do what he does. Moro, same thing to you. I guess when did you kind of start watching college basketball, March Madness, and what what was that like when you kind of watched it for yourself? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, it's been probably four or five years that I've been following college basketball, and uh, my favorite moment was uh, when we, uh, Villanova uh, hit the buzzer beater with Ryan and Archidiacono. He has a Italian passport, so it was kind of. Uh, funny story, but you know, interesting, and um, yeah, that was my favorite moment. So I guess for you, I guess uh, kind of playing in your second straight NCAA tournament. I guess what's that like for you, and just to kind of like you said, just being able to kind of experience that again and kind of be a part of it rather than just kind of watch it. Yeah, it's, it's. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just you know, I saw all those great players playing that game, so all the games that I watched, and uh, I'm here with my team and my coaching staff, so I'm just thinking to do my best and trying to have my my team win. Coach, I guess just the same thing I asked Tariq. Drew McDonald, obviously a really good, skilled big. I guess what kind of challenges does he pose just with the way he's able to shoot it and obviously with this back to the basket? Yeah, he's a fabulous player. I, mean, I think he could play in any league in the country, so... Um, to my knowledge, there's only two players in college basketball this year that averaged 19 points, 10 rebounds, and shot 40% from three, and he's one of them. Um, it's much more than just a shooter, though. He's a great passer, vision, seems to have a great pace of play, and he really competes on the defensive end, too. So um, he's definitely a focal point of our game plan, our attention, as are many other players on their roster. Uh, but he's very deserving of all the recognition he's gotten this year. But I know Morrow kind of mentioned the way that they shoot it. Uh, just in terms of three-point line, how important is that going to be for y'all to protect that with the way that they make make about nine a game so far? Yeah, this is college basketball. I don't think they're any different than most of the teams we play. Three-point shot's a big weapon. And, um, you know, we'll have to just do our best uh, to be who we are. But at the same time, understand that a big, big part of their offensive identity is a three-point shot. In their starting lineup, everybody shoots threes. They come off the bench with some really good shooters, so it's obviously a focal point of the game. Coach, how much? I mean, you know, you've you've good this team is, but the fact that they have three guys that were in the tournament starting for this team this year uh, that were there two years ago, how much is that going to help that group? Well, I think experience is important. You know, any coach would rather have it than not. Um, but when the ball goes up Friday at what 12:30 for us, the team that plays better is going to win. So, um, but I think both teams. And it's an interesting game. All these games have stories within the story. This one's no different. You know, we've got some guys that have played in the tournament. They've got some guys that played in the tournament. They um, won their conference championship this year. We we did the same. So, I think it's going to be a great first round game. Uh, we have a lot of respect for their team. They're really good. Teams 
Yeah, it's just the grind of the Big 12. You know, we, it's not very enjoyable while you're in it. It's such a dogfight twice a week, you know, for a couple months. But this time of year, you just hope it pays dividends. And, um, you know, I can say this. We've been through about everything you can go through. We played against different defenses, different styles, different kinds of players. So um, not a lot of inventing things this week in practice. We just remind the guys, hey, remember when we played Duke? Remember we played Abilene Christian. Remember that game against Incarnate Word. Then you, you know, you get into your conference. Texas did this. Oklahoma State did this. So that's always the objective in a non-conference schedule and a conference schedule is to get you prepared for the postseason. And I think we've done that this year. You mentioned McDonald passes the ball well. It seems like a lot of those guys do. Um, can you kind of, I guess, give us a little insight on their offense and what they do specifically besides shoot the three so well? Yeah, they play really hard. I would agree with what Moro and Tariq told you. They play really hard. Um, they don't take bad shots. Everybody on their team has a role. doesn't take long to understand what the roles are. Um, they they move well on offense. They cut without the ball. They have the ability to play inside through their talent or on the perimeter. So um, I would say they play really hard. They have a lot of balance. And uh, it seems to me like they really know their roles. Coach, can you talk about the importance of, of this time off from last week to what will be around eight days before you guys tip off on Friday? Can you talk about how big that's been for your team? Yeah, I mean, yet to be determined. If we, if we make a run, I think we'll all look back and say, well, that rest was good. If we don't make the run, I'm sure people will be saying that the off days made us rusty. So, you know, I think all coaches want a healthy team and a fresh team, but there's something about momentum in college basketball too. So. Um, from a coaching standpoint, you like the extra days to practice, but on the other side of the coin, you like to keep playing too. So I've never been a big supporter either way. You know, do you want the buy? Do you want to keep playing? I think what you want to do this time of year is be healthy. You've kind of touched uh, on it a little bit earlier, but uh, Coach Brennan over there at Northern Kentucky has really kind of uh, – helped out that program. They didn't start off the way they wanted to, but they've continuously rose. Um, I guess just what are your thoughts on him? I have a lot of respect for him. You know, basically he's built a program, not just one team. They've been very, very good for the time that he's been there. They've competed for championships. Uh, third year in a row, postseason to my knowledge. Maybe it's even more than that, but it's NCAA tournament, NIT, NCAA tournament. Um, I've said to you guys many times, I think the – most pressure in all the sports is when you have to win your conference tournament to get into the postseason after having a great successful championship season. We were in the same situation at Little Rock. So much respect for our players at Little Rock performing in that championship game. And these guys did the same thing. So um, we have a lot of respect for them. This is a really good team. This is a team that can make a run in the tournament. This is a team that could win games in the Big 12 Conference. They're very, very well coached. Um, you know, there's not much more I can tell you. They have our full attention, respect. Um, they're really good. You talk a lot about how the fans help the team whenever you're here at the USA. So what can you say to the fans to come up to Tulsa to help you guys to play better and feel more at home, with, per se? Yeah, I hope. Uh, we're, we're really counting on Red Raider Nation. We had a great season. And uh, – you know, winning the Big 12 Conference regular season, I think, allowed us to get this kind of seed where our fans can uh, come to the game. To my knowledge, you know, I think, uh, what, from Lubbock to Tulsa's six-hour drive, six and a half, from Dallas even shorter, and just from different parts of Oklahoma where we have alums. Um, you know, I'm all for the students going, too. I, I'm not in any way saying skip class, but we sure could use you at Tulsa. It's 12.30 on Friday, so any faculty staff out there, you know, you, it's nice to give the students off a day from time to time. Um, so, yeah, we hope to see a lot of Red Raider people in Tulsa on Friday. It's a great city. I was fortunate enough to live in Oklahoma. Um, it's Seminole, coach at Seminole State College before I came here with Coach Knight and Pat and spent some time in Tulsa. It's just a great city. Got kind of a Lubbock kind of college town vibe to it. To me, it's a great downtown, restaurants, bars, um, tech students. You know, you don't have to go to the bars. You can study for class that night after the game. But, uh, yeah, 1230 tip. Tulsa's a great location. 
travel distance for our fans. We're hoping to see a lot of red and black.